Hello, welcome back. It's Mr. D here. Glad to have you with us. Are you glad to be back too? What have you learnt whilst you've been homeschooling? Have you done your shapes? Can you do your numbers? Can you say da 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 da? You've been learning how to clap. Can you clap for everybody? We'll show you some clapping later. So we're back week 177 of lockdown. I hope you're all keeping well. I hope you're safe. I hope your families are safe. I hope your pets are safe. I hope everybody in your house is keeping well. We're going to do another lesson today. Something a bit messy, I think. As always, a few shout outs. Had loads of people writing stories doing little worksheets of maths and grammar. I've even had some very, very talented people being able to recreate some of their very own pyramids. So well done to you guys for following those instructions. Massive thumbs up to everybody who's keeping busy at home. Please send me a message. Please write me a little comment. I'd love to hear from you and find out what you're doing. And I hope these videos are keeping you busy. Anyway, on to today's task. Maybe two things today. I think we'll do a little bit of writing. Boo, writing. But we'll also do a little baking and we'll make some cakes together. So the writing focus today is going to be on writing instructions. I did say we were going to do some baking, didn't I? So yes, we will be writing a set of instructions to bake a cake. And sometimes when we write instructions that relate to food. We don't call them instructions, we sometimes call them a recipe. And I want you to be able to replicate the cake and make your own at home. Let's look at some key features for writing a set of instructions. My workstation got taken over. So I've moved to a different spot. But as I was saying, some of the key features that you need in your instructions or your recipe. You're gonna need a title to tell us what we're making. A recipe for a delicious cake. You need headings and subheadings that tell you what each paragraph is going to be about. You might want to add in an introduction, an opening paragraph to just explain to the reader what it is that you're actually baking. Here you can use lots of fantastic adjectives to make the cake seem delicious. You might want to add in some rhetorical question, a question that doesn't necessarily need answering. For example, do you want to bake the most delicious cake? Have you ever wanted to taste the cake so chocolatey? They're questions that invite the reader in, rhetorical questions. This next feature is the most important of any instruction manual. You've got to write it in time order. You've got to write it chronologically. The first thing you write about has to be the first step. And the last thing you write about has to be the last step. You're going to need a list of all the equipment that you need. You might want to think of some adverbs, how the reader needs to do things carefully, safely, quickly. Most importantly, You'll need some numbered steps firstly, secondly, then next, after that. You might also want to think of some imperative verbs, uh, what we call bossy verbs, and they tell us that we need to do something. Wait 30 seconds. That's the boring writing part over to the baking area. Right then, we've made our way into the baking area, aka the kitchen, and we will run through some of the key equipment that you need. Now remember I said that we're doing instructions. But when you're looking at food, sometimes the instructions are called a recipe. And some of the times our equipment when we're making a recipe is sometimes called our ingredients. But we also have equipment that we need, specialist equipment that we need when we're baking as well. So let's go through some of those pieces of equipment. You need cake trays, a whisk to beat up all the ingredients, a sieve to sieve out the flour and that makes everything nice and light and fluffy. A mixing bowl to mix all ingredients, a tablespoon measure, a teaspoon measure, and you also need some weighing scales to measure out your ingredients. That's the main equipment that you'll need. Now onto your ingredient. 200 grams of caster sugar, 200 grams of softened butter, four eggs, one teaspoon of the baking powder, a tablespoon of milk. We'll keep that in the fridge to keep it cool. So first things first, before you do any sort of work with food, you need to wash your hands thoroughly. Happy birthday to you. First thing we need to do is heat up our oven to 190 degrees Celsius. Serious face, safety first, make sure you've got a 
adult. Lucy, can you come and check that the oven's on? That's all safe. Whilst the oven's heating up, we can line these trays with some butter to make sure that at the end of it, our cake doesn't stick. The cake mix is gonna go in here. That's where we're gonna get the two cakes. So I just get my butter and rub it around the edge. Do, do, do. And that's two, we'll leave those over there. We'll need those later on. Firstly, we have to heat the oven and prep the baking trays by lining them with butter. Moving on to secondly, take your large bowl or your mixing bowl. That's 200 grams of flour. We need 200 grams of sugar. Obviously cakes aren't the healthiest, so don't spend your whole time eating cakes. What well, perfect. Ding, ding, ding. 200 grams of butter. I'm using stalk butter. You can use whatever butter you have. Just make sure it's not spread. We've got all our ingredients together. Now we're on to the instruction part of making the cake. So where are we up to? Firstly, we preheated our oven and we lined our baking trays with butter or greaseproof paper. Greaseproof paper, greaseproof paper. Say that really fast, greaseproof, greaseproof paper, greaseproof paper. So secondly, in your large mixing bowl, you need to add your butter, flour and your sugar and your four beaten eggs. And I like to sieve the flour just beforehand just to make it all nice and fluffy. So into the flour goes the sugar into nice preposition there. Next, add the butter, a tablespoon of baking powder, and a tablespoon of milk, and the four beaten eggs. Try and keep your areas tidy, but the best part of baking is getting really messy. So we need to beat up our eggs first. So with a whisk, beat the eggs. So you've got your flour, sugar and butter in the mixing bowl and then, oh, if you are extra bakey, a drop of vanilla essence just gives a nice flavour to the cake. On the equipment list, you need a wooden spoon. I forgot the wooden spoon. Slowly add in your eggs and beat the mixture together. Whoever came up with making a cake was a genius. How did, how did they work out that all of these ingredients would make something as delicious as a cake. Are you ready in chocolate? Yeah. Make sure. Ugh. Whew. You get it on the side. Mix like that. All oh, right, on the side. Side tuckers. Ugh, side tuckers. It's hard, this. What we call this is a, a mixture or a batter. You need to make sure it's nice and smooth. Still a bit more. Still, still some lumps in there. Come on! So once you've mixed it to that nice smooth mixture, nice smooth batter, you're ready to go to your next step. This is your basic cake mixture. So at this point, if you want to flavor your cake, you can add different flavors in. So if you want a chocolate cake, you need to add some cocoa powder. If you want to make a banana cake, you need to add in some banana. We're gonna add in some chocolate. Four tablespoons of chocolate cocoa powder. One. Mmm, chocolate. Ah, yeah, no lumps, keeping that smooth texture. Right, so that's changed our mixture to a chocolatey base for our chocolate cake. So at this point, you need to add your mixture into your tins. If you wanted one big cake, you can make a deep tin or you can get two layers. I'm gonna opt for two layers. Make sure there's equal amounts in each tin. The last bits are tricky to get out, so you might need to add another piece of equipment that I forgot to add. You can use a spatula to scrape off the mixture and also to level out the mixture within your tin, making sure that the mixture doesn't go above half of the tin. As you've got to remember, this cake will be rising in the oven. Right then, so you've got your mixture separated equally into your tins. And it's at this point that you put them into the oven for about 20 minutes. Let's wait and see, cross our fingers. So leave those in there for about 20 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. My cake is baking. 20 minutes, starting now. Make sure you don't open the oven door. You've got to trust yourself. 
20 minutes. If you've got an oven that's got a little glass thing, just have a little peek. Final step, I guess, would be to tidy up all this mess. My cake's ready! Taking it out with oven gloves carefully. Ah, oh dear. Slightly burnt, but I've been informed by my producer that they are salvageable. Salvageable is another great word. It means we can rescue them, we'll, we'll still be able to eat them. A uh, neat little thing to do is get something sharp like a knife, or I've got these skewers, and carefully into the center of the cake. Give it a little jab, ow! Take it out, and if there's nothing left on the skewer, that means that the cake has cooked. If there's still some cake on the stick, then you know it needs to go in the oven for a bit longer. Get the cake out of here, and leave it to cool. Not too bad, I'd say. This one's obviously a little bit more burnt, but we're gonna use that as the bottom tier. We're gonna slice, slice the top of that off and stick this nicer one on top. As you can see, the cakes are out there cooled. I'm on my third costume change. Let's keep getting mucky. Now we're making a cream filling, but you could make a jam filling or a, a chocolate filling. You could put fruit in the middle. We're gonna make a chocolate cream, aren't we? And we're going to put those two together and the cake's done. And then I'll show you how you could write a set of instructions for that. How do you make chocolate buttercream? 140 grams of butter. 140 grams of butter. 280 grams of icing sugar. 280 grams of icing sugar. Two tablespoons of milk. Two tablespoons of milk. A bit of chocolate. A bit of chocolate, nice and smooth. So we've got our filling and we're going to slice the top of this one, put this in the middle, sandwich the two together and finish off our cake. So you don't need to waste this bit, you can have it, you can put it as a hat, or you can save it for later to eat it. Let's get our filling on those. And, uh, boop. Great British Bake Off, eat your heart out. And then finally, the last step, get your top tier, sandwich the two together. For decorative reasons, you could get a, your sieve out again and some icing sugar and just lightly dust the top. <laughs> lightly dust the top. So we're back at the workstation. These are cute, aren't they? Might make one of these in another video. We've done our baking, delicious chocolate cake. Hopefully you've had a go at baking some of your own chocolate cakes as well. Now it's time to do a little bit of writing to make the instructions or the recipe to make that chocolate cake so anybody can replicate the delicious chocolate cake that you've just made. I've wrote a bit of an example. I'll read that through and then I'll highlight some of the techniques that I've used and then maybe you guys can have a go at doing one yourself. How to make a glorious chocolate cake. Do you love baking? Would you like a slice of delicious chocolate cake? For many years, the world's top chefs have been experimenting with ingredients to bake the most scrumptious chocolate cake. Carefully follow these precise set of instructions below and you too can enjoy a delicious dessert. It really is a piece of cake. Then you'll see I've got my ingredients and my utensils, then a method the method. Before you start preparing your cake, you will need to gather the ingredients and utensils which are listed above. Heat the oven to 190 degrees and grease two cake tins. Following this, you must wash your hands thoroughly using warm soapy water. Firstly, in a large bowl, beat 200 grams of caster sugar, 200 grams of softened butter, four beaten eggs, 200 grams of self-raising flour, one teaspoon of baking powder and one tablespoon of milk together. Holding the mixing bowl still, beat all the ingredients together until you have a soft, smooth batter. Secondly, as the oven is warming up, carefully divide the mixture equally into two tins. Smooth the surface with a spatula or the back of a spoon. Fill the tins halfway as the cakes will rise in the oven. Next, you can place the tins into the center of the oven and set a timer for 20 minutes. Try not to check on the cakes too much as this will stop them from rising. After the time has elapsed, safely remove the cakes from the oven with your oven gloves and leave on a cake rack to cool. When the cakes have cooled, use a spatula to spread the chocolate butter cream filling. Finally, sandwich the two pieces of sponge together and delicately dust icing sugar on the top. And et voila, you have your cake. I'll put my example into the description below as well and maybe you guys can watch a video of me making a cake and maybe write your own set of instructions, changing some of mine, or if you're feeling really, really adventurous, you could make something entirely different and then send us the instructions for how to make that dish. It could be another cake, it could be a stir fry, it could be a Yorkshire pudding, it could be how to build a Lego house, it 
could be how to do a handstand. You can write me instructions for anything. Send over the instructions and hopefully I'll be able to replicate them exactly. That's it for today's lesson. Um, have fun writing some instructions and I look forward to seeing some so I can replicate them myself. As you can see, the sun's setting. Bit of a whole day venture, this baking thing. But yeah, stay well, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.